She's very tall, very thin. She could model for sure. You have best friends, but she was like the number one best friend. Just really goofy, really, really easy to get along with. Did you ever talk before you fell asleep? Boys, plans for the future. We talked about wanting to go to NAU together and trying to plan out the next year of our life and if we could really make that step. That summer seemed like it lasted a lifetime. Some days it's easier to think like we're never gonna find out and other days I, I ache for it. I ache for that justice for her. It baffles me that it's already been eight years, going on a decade, um, and still no resolution. Would the Adrian that you knew have gotten into a car with a stranger? Not willingly. went through your mind this morning when you woke up? Just uh, that it's her birthday and the things we used to do on her birthday as she was growing up. I thank God for the time I had with her for the opportunity to be a father and to have such a, a wonderful daughter and to experience that. There's a lot of people that don't know what it is to be a dad and don't have somebody you know to love and um, she was just a, such a big part of my life. She went to grade school there she had a lot of friends in the area. I can just, I know where her friends lived at, where I used to drop her off. And I would pick her up sometimes from school or she'd be walking, I'd pick her up. She'd want to go hang out with friends at a park. Yeah, we, we grew up in this area. Never thought she'd end up here. But. The thing that stands out, quite honestly, about this whole case is the amount of people, as you can see, that she was surrounded by. You know, you could work a case and say, okay, this person we really need to look at. In this case, she was surrounded by more than one, more than half a dozen of those people that were like, man. A lot of times, m murders, it's usually by somebody you know. Right? Boyfriend, girlfriend, wannabe boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, somebody that knows the person but feelings aren't reciprocated or whatever, you know? Like nobody's been ruled out, right? Even Fran. Fran's a great guy. He's kind of goofy, and I don't mean that in a mean way, but he's just a goofy guy. Were they easy going together or did they have a volatile relationship? No, very easy going. Very easy going. They were always like laughing together, holding hands. Do you think there's any way Fran was involved in this? Absolutely not. Never in my mind throughout the whole investigation did I think he did it. Never. I think it was hard for him to be looked at as a possible suspect or even a bad guy. She called me, she called me like 10 times. I had 10 missed calls from her. When was that? 
It was from 410 to 417. She had to have known that I was asleep. Would you still have considered her your girlfriend? Uh, well, I was talking to some other girl, and like we talked about this, and that's somehow we got in an argument that night. So the argument was more your guys' relationship. Tell me if I'm wrong in any of this. Your guys' relationship, the fact that you were talking to some other girls, and it sounds like she wanted you guys to be exclusive, mm -hmm. and you're not sure that that's what you were ready for with the relationship. She was telling me, I'm going to call it the cab, I'm calling a taxi. And she's like, so she said that then? Yeah. Okay. And it's, that still doesn't make sense because I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure she didn't have any money on her. I'd hate to say I ruled Fran out um, because, you know, you, you look at these stories and they say, well, it's always the boyfriend, it's always the husband. It's, and a lot of times, statistically, it's someone close to the victim, not necessarily a stranger. One thing we did as part of this investigation is we reviewed her Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, now we noticed, and I just maybe you can help me understand this. She, you and her, like befriended in May. We did. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, say it'll say. Make you not a friend anymore. Yeah. Really? Do you know why that would happen? It actually doesn't have you guys as being friends right now. No way. Yeah. With Adrian? Yeah. No. To this day, just every interaction I've had with Fran has been, you know, he's been cooperative, he's been helpful. Like, he's really shown that he's been trying to be helpful and, and given as much information as he could. Did he take a polygraph? He did. Did he pass it? Well, that's the funny thing. He, nobody passed the polygraph. <laughs> Uh, of all the people that took them. Did you ever suspect that he had anything to do with it? I never did. I never suspected it at all. Adrian and, and Francisco became friends in like the fifth grade. Um, my son knew their family, you know, uh, his sister. So Fran is somebody I want to look at, still. The fact that he's out of the country now, is that? Well, yes and no, because he's not a US citizen and he wasn't back then, so it's not unusual that he would go back. So, it, now, it would be had he been a US citizen and then now all of a sudden he's living in Mexico. Mm -hmm. is Scottsdale Cab Guys. If you'd like us to pick you up, leave a message at the tone. Back then, she called. She called that cab company. So naturally, I'm gonna reach out and find out, okay, did you pick her up? What happened? Where were you at? Get all the details I can get. I was up around Tatum area, uh -huh. finishing up the call, and I got a call from her about four in the morning. Maybe, yeah, about four, maybe a little before. So she told me the cross streets, and it was an 8 p.m., and I told her, ma'am, it's going to take about 28 minutes. I'm really far away, but I want to come take care of you. Mm -hmm. And I just said, you know, are you going to wait for sure? You promise you'll wait for me. I'll come get you. It's on my way home. So I started driving. I started driving, and I'm not sure who called who first, but I called her. I always call on those long calls to make sure that they're still there. She said she was going to be there. Um, and I said, okay, I'm still coming to get you. She called me, and she go, and she sounded a little, at that point, she sounded a little bit, she wasn't as uh, normal as before. She sounded like she was a little stressed out. And she said, are you coming, are you coming? And I said, yeah, I'm about eight minutes away. And she goes, well, I'm not there yet. And I said, really? Uh, she goes, no, I'm down the street, I'm walking there. Finally, I get there, and I'm parked in the front, and uh, I just started waiting, of course, and I called her three times, made no answer. She was nowhere, nowhere. I got out of the cab just a little bit, walked around it, just kind of hoping someone, she would see me. They were coming up the street, and I waited for probably ten minutes, and I took off to my dad's because I go pay him the least money every night mm -hmm. that I collect from the drivers. Then I went home and went to sleep. Right 
right after he was supposed to pick her up, right. his phone didn't have a signal for a while. For 12 hours. 12 hours. 12 hours. So that's something I got to talk to you about. Like, any, any person's going to want to know, why is that guy's phone off? The gaps in your phone record. That's something I got to, you know, I got to reconcile that somehow. Well, I went over to visit one of my one of my cousins. I'm not quite sure if they were working on the apartment next door on the outside of the apartment, and he heard like a woman scream, and um, that, and he heard like if somebody was trying to shut up the lady, but they weren't quite sure. As soon as they lowered down their music, the neighbor, the neighbor, the taxi driver's house, like. He hired up his music full blast. And I said, are you sure that's what you heard, like a woman screaming? And he's like, yeah, a woman screaming desperately. Okay. That's what he, that's the words he used. Okay. My last attempt at a positive interaction, he shut his door on us and said he wasn't helping anymore. I get it. If you talk to an attorney and they say he stopped communicating, you're, you stop communicating. But at that time, we were in an information gathering. We weren't in a, hey, we think you committed a crime gathering thing. Can you take these off, please? Just have a seat I right there. Hurt nobody. Please Tom, take these off. Listen to me. First, I need you to sit down. I just want you to take these off, man. Just sit down for me. All right? More what? Are you going to hurt me? Absolutely not. Everything that happens from here on out depends on you. Okay? I understand that you you're, you might be upset at this. Okay? You guys are liars. Just listen and to you're, me. You're, just let me finish speaking. You're, you're hurting somebody Tom, for no reason. Tom, I don't get it. Just let me finish speaking. I would never hurt anybody. I would only hurt myself. Okay. If you haven't already seen that. I don't want you to hurt yourself either. I will hurt myself because now I'm getting treated like shit and I don't like it. You're not under arrest. You're detained right now. It's Why would you detain time. me? Uh, and I'll get to that here in a second. I'd like to get you dressed. I want to get to it quickly. I've got a life okay. to live, man. And, and you'll get on to living your life. I don't speak pig Latin. <laughs> you guys suck, man. That's my DNA. You don't deserve it. I'm very pissed off about that. Why should you get my DNA? Okay, this is what the judge was. the judge. The judge doesn't know me. Okay. The judge is not my judge. So? Somebody did something to this poor girl, and you guys have been screwing with the taxi driver. They got a phone call. Can you open your mouth? Ah. Uh -huh. That's a violation. How is that a violation? He just stuck something in my mouth well, and took to something explain. that belongs to me. It doesn't to matter. Explain. That's not right. Why did you take a DNA sample from Okay. Um, we took a DNA sample from you as an investigative um, uh, uh, measure. If I'm not a suspect, then why can you take away my stuff? Something you know, that belongs to me. You don't have to be a suspect. Why is in America, are we not free that you can take my DNA? You're a creature. I hate you. And that mother that does my Let me go! I hate you! You're free to go. I hate all of you, man! Take something that belongs to me. Because I picked up, or tried to pick up a girl. 
and missed it. Her up. No, I never did. I wish I did, though. Because then she'd be saved. Now I have to work for myself because nobody will hire me because of all of the misinformation that has been dealt out by the news agency, which is information given by you. Uh, you treated me like a criminal, and I have never, ever been a suspect, as per what you have said. But in not being a suspect, you guys have ruined my life permanently. I won't call him back because he's angry at me. He's not going to give me information. He's mad at me. So we've talked about him calling him back. Is it usual for people who didn't do anything wrong in a case to react like this? No, it's not. Hi, Tom. My name's Morgan. My name's Morgan Lowe, and I'm an investigative reporter in Phoenix. I don't know that I could fix what damage was done before, but I do know that listening to you and conveying your story He's still angry today. He's angry at the media, he's angry at Tempe police, but do you think he still has information that could help you if he spoke to you? Yes. There's always a chance that maybe he saw something that he didn't really pay much attention to, but maybe it has maybe it adds value to the investigation. Maybe it maybe it is pertinent to the investigation. She was at a party with 40 people, and she left the party. And somebody from the outside might think somebody followed her out of the party. Is that a scenario that detectives that you have thought about? Yes. Several of the partygoers that, that I want to talk to that, you know, a couple have some interesting pasts of things that they were involved in. Was there anybody at the party that just stood out to you or seemed Honestly, unusual? there was one guy, but I can't get the picture in my face. It's like, my theory is that someone came into the party that nobody knew and was just like observing people. I don't know though, because I can't remember his face. Did Adrian leave with you? Do you have any idea where she's at? I have no idea where she is. I wish I did. Because even, like I said, even as someone who kind of just knew her sort of in passing, it's all she was sweet. You know, I have not the slightest clue where she is. I looked up one of the guys that was at the, the party that night. He, he'd had a um, violent interaction with an ex-girlfriend. Uh, and he was at the party that night. Um, did you look at him as a possible suspect or person of interest? We looked at everybody at the party. We also considered like, did something happen at the party? And the whole, whoever was left freaked out and, you know, tried to do something to clean up or whatever, like an accidental death, say. Was there any connection between and Adrian that you're aware of? No. No real relationship. I mean, he was in trouble for apparently being fixated on his ex-girlfriend. Adrian was not a new fixation for him as far as you know. Yeah, as far as I know. Were you able to, you know, say these people are ruled out? Not necessarily ruled out, but as you dig into the, to the evidence that we do have, we don't find anything that necessarily says they were involved. So, you've got a case where you don't know who did it, and you still have all these people who could have done it. Yes. How odd is that? Right. Yeah. I mean, then that's. I mean, with any unsolved, you could you can have a plethora of 
I investigated leads, you know, multiple suspects. Um, in this case, you know, the amount of folks that kind of stand out, there's, there's, there's a few. We have the boyfriend, we have the cab driver, we have the guys at the party, all persons of interest but not official suspects. We have traced one other person to Adrian's neighborhood the day she disappeared, and this person has a record of violent attacks against unsuspecting women. Undercover Phoenix police detectives were able to obtain a DNA sample from the suspect just last week. I need your full name and date of birth, please. Brian Patrick Miller. Within literally hours, we had a hit from those two murders, scientifically linking him by DNA to those two murders over 20 years ago. Angela Brasso was reported missing by her boyfriend about four hours after she went riding along this bike path the evening of November 8th. Well, the body uh, is, is decapitated. There are multiple injuries, which our homicide detectives do not want to discuss at this point. Miller now held without bond as police continue to rake through the mountain of clutter at his sunny slope home looking for evidence. He dressed in this zombie hunter kind of cyberpunk outfit. He's with the people from The Walking Dead. It's that ironic, Walking Dead TV show, Dawn of the Dead movies. He took the zombie hunter to car shows, used it in photo shoots, and it was sometimes splattered with fake blood. To think that somebody who has killed in that fashion, uh, that there weren't other crimes related to this, uh, is uh, unlikely. Investigators believe Brian Miller left Arizona and moved to Everett, Washington. We're here in Everett because in the early 2000s, Brian Miller, the zombie hunter, lived here and his time here coincided with a series of violent attacks against women. The assault happened just before school yesterday morning. The 14-year-old girl was apparently on her way to school at Cascade High School. Police say this violent crime against such a young victim appears to be a random attack. A police dog search failed to find the suspect. What does it feel like to be back here 21 years later? It's creepy. I think that he had been following me around. I looked over my shoulder and I saw a tall dark shadow come out of the brush and onto the trail. I have no memory of any knife going into my stomach at all. Is there any doubt in your mind that the person who attacked you was Brian Patrick Miller? No, not a single doubt. Not a single doubt. When did uh, Brian Miller cross your radar in this case. Did you think this could be the guy? I did, and uh, I mean, you have somebody who's responsible for and, and has a history of whether it's murdering or uh, inflicting injury to women, and he's uh, in the general vicinity where Adrian lived on the same weekend that she went missing. 